All right. Let's, let's pray, and we'll, we'll get into our, our, our message for today. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for the fathers, uh, and, I, and I thank you for, for you, our, our Heavenly Father, our, our perfect Father, our perfect example, uh, one that we can look to for, uh, for an example on how we should be, but also that you just gave us life. You gave us, you gave us physical life. You gave us spiritual life, and I thank you so much for that. Lord, I pray that uh, as we dig into your word today, that we would just learn some more things about you and how we should be in terms of how we react and how we act in this world, in this place in which you've put us in. Thank you for salvation. Thank you that we can have a relationship with, through, with you through your son. Be with me this morning as I, as I teach and, and give to these people what you've given to me. Lord, let, let my words be your words. I also want to go ahead and lift up Dave as well as he's, as he's preaching in, in uh, Midtown. Be with him today uh, as well. And just I pray that, that, that we would not leave here the same as the way that we came in. Lord, all these things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's get into it. So we're going to talk today about uh, our topic having to do with death brings life. Death brings life. And everybody hopefully has a sheet in front of you. If not, we do have some extras up here, but, but you've got this sheet and that you can go ahead and follow, follow along with. Do you have one, Brian? There's, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. When we think about death, I mean, that's a negative thing, right? We don't think about death in a, in a, in a positive way, typically ever. Right? That's, that's not the first thing that comes to mind is something positive when you think about death. But what we're talking about today is a death that will lead to life. Right? And in particular, dying to self. I think probably by the time I'm done, you're probably going to hear me say that 50 times today. We've got to die to ourselves. But the thing about it is, is that when we do that, that can lead to life. You know, we're, when we're born physically... We're born selfish. You just you don't you don't have to teach a kid to be selfish. You know you're not going to have to sit down with a toddler and say you know what you really should think about yourself more often. I mean that's that's, that's not something that we say. Uh, we 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 know that kids, especially small kids, have a stranglehold on the word mine. That, that this, this is not new to them. It's not uh, something we've got to really take the time to get them to understand. No, we're born selfish. I will say this, though. It's not wrong to have your own goals. It's not wrong to have your own pursuits. But at the same time, we've got to make sure that we're dying to ourselves there as well and make sure that we get with God and say, okay, this is what I'd like to do, but wait a minute, is this what you would have for me in those goals and in those pursuits? God made us differently and uh, it, 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 it takes someone that wants to be a police officer maybe to reach other police officers. It takes someone that wants to be a teacher to reach other teachers. It takes someone that want to be a firefighter to reach other firefighters. So it's not wrong to have those goals, right? Not wrong to have those pursuits, but still making sure that God, that you're going the way that God would have you to go. Without following Christ, we'll spend our lives in self-gratification. And the thing about that self-gratification is that it will never satisfy right there there's never going to be enough money if that's what you, if that's what your goal is your pursuit is there's never going to be the perfect job you're, you're never going to have that car that's the car that you're going to be satisfied with for the rest of your life those pursuits without god in them without christ in them will never satisfy John chapter 12, and this is kind of where we're going to be, be kind of going from today. This is our main scripture today. So John chapter 12, verses 24 through 26 uh, says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. 
A life with lasting purpose must involve death. It's got to involve death. Christ's physical death reaped an eternal harvest, reaped eternal life for us. So because of that death, we can have a relationship with him. We, we, we're not going to see life without death. So let's talk about this thing called eternal life. And that's going to be actually your first blank there on that second page. Eternal life. I um, was, was raised in church, and, and so I'm not going to take the time to give my full testimony today, but some of you have heard, heard pieces of it here and there. But I was raised in church and had to come to the realization at some point in my life that there's a difference between going to church and being saved. Um, and I had recognized that, and, and, and I, I praise God I did come to that realization in my life at one point in time. So let's talk about eternal life, and let's talk about what this thing is about, and making sure that, that you're not just here and just going to church and going through the motions. And it's Sunday, so I, I'm supposed to be there. That's what I'm supposed to do. Do you have a relationship with God? So God created us with an eternal soul, so we will live, we we're going to live somewhere forever. Right? When, when he created Adam, he breathed into his life uh, the, the breath of God, he, uh, the breath of life, and he became a living soul. Right? So he, we are, have an eternal soul. We're going to live somewhere forever. Make sure you know where you're going to be. John 12, verse 25 says, He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. So this thing again, dying to self. If I'm going to hold on to my life and everything involved in my life, I don't have a grip that's strong enough. I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. But when I give that up and allow God to use it, he can do some amazing things with it. So understand that all of us have sinned, right? Every single one of us. None of us is perfect. Romans 3.23, you all know this. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We deserve death and hell for our transgressions. But God has given us a gift that if we would just accept, then he's paid for it all. Christ redeemed us with his blood. Romans 5, 8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I tell you, this is one of my, and I'll say it the way I like to say it, this is one of my most favoritest verses in the Bible. I love Romans 5, 8, because it just reminds me of, of when I was in sin. It doesn't matter what I was doing. It doesn't matter how long I was involved in it. God knew it. He saw it. And he, and he sent his son to die for me anyway. How many times have you heard this? I'm sure you've heard this. If, you, if you've witnessed anybody for any length of time or any number of people, at some time you've heard someone say, you know, I, I can't go to church. I, I, I got to get my life cleaned up first. I, I, I can't go to church. I, you, don't, you don't know what I've done. I, I can't walk in there. right? This verse tells me, again, I'll, I'll say it again, God knows. I, I, I may not know. You're right, I don't know. And there's maybe some things that you don't want to confide, confide in me. That I may never know, but guess what? God knows. And he knows it all. And he sent his son to die for you anyway. That's right. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us doesn't matter what you've done. doesn't matter how long you've been involved in that thing, whatever it is. Christ knows he died for you anyway. John 3 uh, verses 15 through 17, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We, this verse is so well known and, and sometimes we just kind of pass over. But man, it's powerful, right? For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 
1 Timothy 2, 4 through 6, I love this too. Who, who will have all men to be saved? And I think that that's a good thing that people need to know as well. It doesn't matter again what you've done. He wants you to be saved. It says, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. This is a gift, as Amy said. It's something, it's not something that we earn. Right? Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, you know this as well, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It, 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 you can't say enough Hail Marys, right? You, you, you can't say the Lord's Prayer enough. You can't do, you, there, there aren't enough sacraments for you to do. You, you can't conf, go to confession enough times. It, 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 you, you, there's not enough that you can do. We can't do this on our own. You know, I... I grew up with a grandmother that came from a Catholic faith. And as a kid, uh, if you were in her house at a certain time of night, you were praying with her. Um, uh, but it's, it's, it's cool to see how things changed over the years because I know the Hail Mary like the back of my hand because I said it with my grandmother countless number of times. Just her saying it and then I repeat and then she says a little part and then I repeat. And so I learned it. So I, I know it like the back of my hand. I still do. I probably will never never forget it. Uh, but but she, she died a saved woman though. But it's just I think about that and I think about all the things involved in not just that religion but religions period. Right? In the things that you've got to do. Have you done this? Have you done that? And and people are so trapped in that. Uh, there's nothing we can do, y'all. There's nothing. But just accept, right, the gift that God has given us. I can't boast on who I am and the things that I've done because I can't do enough. Why wouldn't everyone accept this gift? Right? Why wouldn't everyone accept this, this free gift? Well, the thing about it is some don't want to give up their own belief system. I think a lot of us have our own belief system. A lot of people have their own belief system. Let me throw some things out at you that you've probably heard before, right? In your witnessing and your speaking to people. Well, I hear what you're saying, but I think. Yeah, I've heard that. I just don't think a loving God would send someone to hell. We've heard that, right? And, and, and I've gone through that too. He you have a say in that. He doesn't do that, right? Accept the gift. Well, I believe that all, all, all religions lead to the same place, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's, all, it's, all, it's all the same, right? Uh, well, well, I've been religious all my life, so uh, I, I believe in God. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I, I believe in God. You know, that, that, um, earlier in John chapter 14, Christ is talking to the disciples and says, you believe in God, believe also in me. Right. Right. Right, so we've got to believe in Christ as well and what he's done. There's, there's a lot of people that believe in God. A lot of people believe in God. When you bring up Jesus, that changes things. You believe in God, believe also in me. So the, th the thief on the cross recognized that he was a sinner. I think we see this, you have this in your page here as well. Luke uh, chapter 23, uh, verses 39 through 43, it says, And one of the malefactors, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. So there was a difference in each thief and who they thought Jesus was. John 14 verse 6 says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Who is Jesus? Is he the way? Or is he just a good religious figure? Right? Is he just some other guy? 
right? There's one person out here that knew who he was. And Jesus recognized that he knew who he was. This relationship that we, that we can have with Christ, it does re- involve repentance. Right? It's a change of mind that leads to a change of action. Acts, verse, uh, Acts 3 verse 19 says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Acts 20 verse 21 says, Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. So here's the thing. It's not about your thoughts. It's not about my thoughts. It's not about your ideas. It's not about my ideas. What does the Bible say? We trust in that. 1 John verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 12 says, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Pretty basic. Pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. Yes. Yes. You have the Son, you have life. You don't have the Son, you don't have life. There's nothing ambiguous about that. It just is what it is, and it's just about believing what God said. Period. So let's continue from there. Number two, your, your blank there is fruitful life. Fruitful life. This is a saying, and, and, and I'm sure you've probably heard this before. Um, I, this is not one that I've heard like regularly, but I think it's cool. So you can count the seeds in an apple, but you can't count the apples in a seed. And, and, and you know, when I, as, as I'm going this past week, especially just in, in preparation uh, for this, I saw that, and, and kind of like I had the same reaction as you. This, I said that, and it was kind of a little bit of delayed reaction. Like, oh, right, it's, and I kind of had the same reaction too. And you think about that for a minute, right? I can break open an apple, and I can look in there, and I can see four seeds, right, or whatever, right? I can count the seeds in an apple, but I'm not going to take a seed, an apple seed, and plant it and bring up a tree and wait for that one apple to come, come from that tree, <laughs> from that one seed I planted. But isn't it amazing how I can take one seed and plant it and get tons of fruit from one seed? And I don't know when I plant that one seed how many apples I'm going to get. I may get 30, I may get 50, I may get more. And the thing about it too is with that tree, it'll go through a cycle. Right? It'll, 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 kind of, it'll die, and it'll come back and reap fruit again the next year, and again the next year, and again and again. I, I, one of the things I'm, I, I, I'm contemplating doing, and I say contemplating, I'm going to do this at some point in time, is uh, every, every now and again, I'll post on Facebook thing, you know, scripture or you know, what God's doing in my life or whatever. I'm going to take a month. And it's going to be a month of every single day I'm going to show something in nature or by the body or something like that and how it functions as evidence to how that God is in it. I want to do that. I've been contemplating that for a while. It's just amazing to me that we can look at creation. Just create God's creation. And it just screams his word. Right? It is, this reminds me of, of the parable of the sower. And when we get kind of towards the end of that parable and we see that seed that was planted in, in the good ground, that it, it's going to bring forth a hundredfold. And it says more than that. I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. But my point is, is that that one seed can bear much fruit. Right. Much fruit. If we have died to ourselves... And allow God to work. Here's the thing though. You get no fruit from a seed that isn't planted. If we're not going to take the time to plant, nothing's coming up. It's not happening on its own. So praise God that he allows us to be used in his plan and to further his kingdom. But man, let's get out there and plant seeds. Don't take the time to try to evaluate the ground. Well, mm, they're not going to be receptive. No. Just sow the seed. Just sow the seed. Pray for it. 
and see what God does. You must die to self so you can see opportunities to plant the seed. So that letter A here, die to the flesh and self-centeredness. Die to the flesh and self-centeredness. So many Christians are out there still looking out for themselves, right? That's, that's just the way we are. We live in a Laodicean age, and there's a lot of Christians out there. They're saved, but they're still looking out for themselves. That person that you're around that doesn't make you feel comfortable, right? remember that, that they don't know God. And I think that's, that's something that, that we do a lot of times too is we'll, we'll see someone or we'll work alongside someone that, that doesn't make us feel comfortable because of their lifestyle or because of their language or because of whatever. And for some reason we've forgotten that they are of their father the devil. And that's why they're acting that way. We can't and we shouldn't expect them to act like they're filled with the Holy Spirit. So, so why would I want to run away from that? Instead, how about I allow God to use me to reach that person and plant a seed that can hopefully spring up and reap much fruit? Don't expect someone that's, that's lost to act like a Christian. They're not going to. Just plant the seed. Galatians 5.17 says, For the flesh lusteth, lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. The Bible says the flesh profits nothing. John 6.63 says, It is the, the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The flesh won't give us spiritual results either. We can try and we can work and we can work and we can work. But man, if we're doing things in the flesh, it's not going to reap spiritual results. James 1.20 says, For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. But we've got to die. We've got to die. Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I'm still in the flesh, though. So for that reason, it's a daily battle. It is going to be a daily battle. 1 Corinthians 15, 31 says, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. So it's not going to be a one-time thing. I tell you, if you, if you thought it was going to be a one-time thing, just keep going. It won't take long before the flesh and sin comes, comes knocking on your shoulder. And, and you're right back into maybe the mess that you were in before or, or getting into a new mess. Right? That can happen too. So it's a, it's a daily thing. You got to die daily. Crucify that flesh daily. Letter B. Allow Christ to produce his fruit in you. That blank is allow. Allow Christ to produce his fruit in you. Here's the thing we can't bear fruit alone. We can't, we can't do this on our own. John 15, uh, verses 4 through 5 says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the, in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. I remember, so my, my oldest, Charles, sitting right here, I remember a time uh, when we had a garden in our backyard. I remember taking uh, Charles and Aaron a out to the backyard, and we had, we had uh, 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 tomatoes, I think it was tomatoes, that were growing in the back, and we were talking about this portion of Scripture and just how this, this, this is hooked up to the vine. And as a result, we have fruit. Now, if I was to cut this off, Nothing's going to happen as a result of it. It's going to die. But as long as everything is connected, 
fruit is there. Again, God's creation, screaming out what his word says, it's, it's, it's all there. And we, we know this, right? It, when you're abiding in Christ, you see things differently. When, when the Spirit of God is just working in you, you're more sensitive to His Spirit and those opportunities that He gives. And, and if you're like me, sometimes I'm having those days where I'm not, it's not there like it should be. I've allowed the world to, to I'm busy. Right? And I didn't have time to do this or didn't have time to do that. And you just get involved in things of the world. And it's different. When, when it, it feels different, but man, when the Spirit of God is there, uh, and I have taken the time to die to myself, God does some awesome things. When we yield to the Spirit, He produces fruit in our lives, and you know we could talk about uh, uh, Galatians five twenty two through twenty five. I believe that's here. Yeah, it's in your notes. We talk about the fruit of the Spirit. That fruit of the Spirit is there when when I'm yielding to the Spirit. When we live in the flesh, we have a tendency to push people away from Christ instead of bringing them to Christ. And, I, and, and when I think about that, that's, again, that's us getting back to that self-centeredness again. Uh, getting back to thinking about me. Well, I believe this. Well, my thoughts about this subject is, are this. I, I'm, I'm not going to get into specifics. But all, all of the political stuff going on right now, right? Everybody has maybe their own specific thoughts about those things. But can we take the time to not think about what I want and just put all that stuff aside and just reach people where they are, right? Reach people where they are uh, and, and help them understand that there's a savior in this world that loves them. And that wants to have them be a part of, of, of this kingdom that he's building. When we're so hooked into those things that we believe that really in the grand scheme of things in eternity don't have much to do with anything. But, but, but we're going to die for it. What, ha- what that does is it pushes people away. And then, and then the, the, the unsaved world or the lost world looks at that and they, they say, if that's what God is about, I don't want any of that. Yeah. And God forbid that something in my life is causing someone to not want to have a relationship with God. Let's think about that. When we, when we think about the things that we're ready to just die on a hill for in terms of our politics... Uh, it's, it's not that important, y'all. What's important are the souls and the spirits of men and women because that's what's going to last. That's what's going to be forever. We know we're going to live forever somewhere. Let's be a part of making sure that people live forever with Christ, with our God. So our next blank here, number three, is honored. Honored life. Honored life. Our ideas of who deserves honor it ne- is it not necessarily the same as God's. And it kind of think, goes along with same lines with what I was just talking about. But we do receive honor when we're serving God. And look back in our uh, main scripture we're looking at today, John uh, chapter 12 verse 26, if any man serve me, right, it's Jesus talking, if any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Die to self and choose to follow. That's your next blank is follow. Die to self and choose to follow. Christ gave us the example. Right, John uh, chapter 6, verse 38 says, For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Philippians 2, 8, and, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Um, this is one of the most fascinating verses to me as well, because I think about Jesus Christ and the fact that he had just lived in perfection 
all of eternity past. And for some reason, <laughs> he decided to, to step away from that, knowing all of the things he was going to have to endure for me, for you, for this world. Wow. It's, I, I'm so fascinated by that. He humbled himself and became obedient even to the death of the cross. We must deny ourselves. We've got to deny ourselves. Matthew 6.24 says, Then Jesus said unto his disciples, if any, man come, uh, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. If you're going to take up your cross, it's going to cost you something. Amen. It's going to cost you something. And you've got to deny yourself. If you're not going to deny yourself, you're not going to be effective. And I want to be effective for the cause of Christ. Are you seeking honor and praise from men? It won't last. And it won't satisfy. You know, I think about people in, 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 in Hollywood and in L.A. and in New York, and, and they, they get all this honor and praise and glory from men and, and awards and this, that, and the other. And great. I mean, if, if that, that's awesome if that's what you want to do. I just hope that most of those people, although it doesn't seem like most of them, but I hope that at least some of them take that trophy home and recognize that's not anything, right, in, in terms of my relationship with God. If that's what you're looking for, people, people will praise you and people will honor you as long as you're doing what they like. As, as long as they're okay with you. And as long as what you're saying they're okay with. But then as soon as you change, you're going to be canceled. <laughs> And it'll happen like that, right? Where, where, where are you looking for in terms of your honor and your praise? Are you looking for that from people? Are you looking for it from, from men? It won't last. It won't satisfy. I'm hoping and I'm praying that you're looking to be honored by our Lord Jesus Christ. Die to self and choose to serve. Your next blank is serve. Die to self and choose to to serve. Matthew chapter 23 verse 11 says, but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Matthew 20 verse 28 says, even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. You know, Jesus was the example in so many different ways. And again, humbling himself. If he humbled himself, how is it that we can't? Or how is, it we that, how is it that we think that we are above for some reason and we, are, we shouldn't be doing that or we shouldn't be doing this or that thing is beneath us, really? Luke chapter 18, verses 28 through 30. Then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There, there is no man that hath left house or parents or brethren or wife, or children, for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come, life everlasting. And then Hebrews 6.10 says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. You know, I, I hear Jen say this from time to time. By the way, she never knows. I, I never tell her what I'm going to what I'm going to talk about or what examples I'm going to use. So whenever I say, you know, Jen, I just wonder what fear is coming up inside of her heart. What is he going to say? You know, Jen says this sometimes uh, in in terms of of me. Uh, I hear her say sometimes that you know Brian's a good leader for our family. But one of the things I think about too, in in turn, is that. I don't force her to follow. She has to follow voluntarily. So regardless of if I'm a good leader, or, and sometimes I am and sometimes I'm not, right? I'm human. Um, regardless of, of what's going on with me, if she's not willing to follow, then, then my leadership is not doing much good. And I would say this, 
Christ doesn't force us to do anything. We've got His Word. Right? We're in an awesome church with great preaching and great teaching. But we have the option to follow or not. Uh, my prayer is that we follow. My prayer is that we follow. And that we get away again. I know I said it before, but I'm going to say it again. We get away from our own ideas. We get away from our own thoughts. We get away from our own convictions that we want to try to think are biblical, but are not. And we just focus on this world and what they need. We get away from this person makes me feel uncomfortable, but they don't know the Lord. So let me reach them. And let me do what I can do to reach them. God is calling, uh, I'm sorry, who is God calling you to serve? Are you willing? Where is he calling you to serve? Are you willing? I tell you, for for years, I, I would pray a prayer, God, wherever, whoever, and it's funny, be careful praying that prayer. Because you pray it, God will say, okay, okay. And then I, and I found myself in places sometimes, and I, I'm thinking about jobs and things like that, where I thought, and, and I'm like, oh God, why am I here? And then I go back, it's like God reminding me, remember when you pray? And I'm like, okay, okay. Are you willing? Are you willing? Will you die to yourself so that you can serve and that your service is effective? Do you want eternal life? Well, die to yourself. Die to your pride. Die to your unbelief and trust in Christ. And I know I'm talking to people today that are probably, I, I, I would not be surprised, right, if every single person in this room is, is, is saved and knows God. But one of the things I always think about, too, is sometimes other people are listening. So I want to make sure that I'm catching everybody, right? If you want eternal life, die to yourself, die to your pride, die to your unbelief. Trust Christ and trust what he did. Do you want to bear fruit? Die to yourself, so that you can reach others instead of expecting everyone to be just like you. Do you want God to honor you? Do you want to hear him say, well done? Man, that's something I look forward to. Do you want to hear him say, well done? You got to die to yourself. Listen to this. I thought this was amazing. And I, I found this this. I say quote, uh, it's, it's more of a definition, but it's from a, a, a website called familiesfree.com. This is not a Christian site. And I say that on purpose because listen to this. It's talking about a seed. The seed, which contains the fullest potential of life, ceases to be a seed so that the plant inside may live. Essentially, its original form has died. And the seed becomes something new. I, when the Bible says what it says, it's true, y'all. Yeah. It, it, it just is. It just is. And God knows his creation because he created it. And so when he says you got to die, you got to die. But when you die, it brings forth life. It brings forth life. And that one seed is not necessarily going to bring up one piece of fruit. When you die and you trust Christ in it, that one seed can bear fruit a hundredfold. We never know. Plant the seed. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your creation. And I thank you for the fact that the two go together like hand in glove because you are a part of both. You spoke everything into existence and you are the personification of the word. So I thank you for that. Lord, I pray that we will look at these things that we've learned today. 
and recognize the importance of dying to ourselves, dying to our own thoughts, our own ideas, our own beliefs. And when we give those things up, life can come from that. I pray that we remember that from death, life can come. Be with us throughout the rest of this day. Uh, uh, give us opportunities to, to minister your word to others. Give us fruit. And Lord, all these things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.